Yidi, let's, <laughs> Yidi, <laughs> let's look back on our plan. <laughs> Let's look back at our planet Costa Rica experience. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go. What you'll hear on this episode are our personal views and you should do your own research if you're interested in volunteering in Planet Costa Rica also. For more info, please visit planetcostarica.com. In this episode, we're going to summarize, conclude and digest three months of our vegan farm volunteering experience in Costa Rica. Yeah, get ready for this. So... Let's first have a look at the things that we feel are essential to have or do in advance for this thing. <laughs> yeah, first things first, you're definitely going to need a variety of clothing. Mm -hmm. The temperature um, changes and drops and it's raining quite a lot. So you'll definitely need like a waterproof jacket and you're going to need some waterproof like trousers maybe for when you're working because even though it's raining, like the work doesn't stop on the farm. But just for like in your spare time, um, it's like really hot and nice and sunny at the same time. So you'll want shorts, you'll want your bathing suit, like you kind of need like a bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and in the evening, the temperature can drop as well. So you'll want some like, you know, leggings or cozy trousers. Wow. Yeah, the, the temperature differences are not as rapid as in like South Africa, but it was still quite felt like some people are freaking out during the night sometimes it was really cold right yeah and like yeah. we we obviously had each other so yeah. we'd be warm during the night but i don't know how you would be like on your own it would be quite chilly maybe yeah another thing you'll need is that for sure is a hat okay whatever hat you want just wear it because when it's sunny you can get a burnt face and you don't want that, okay. Um, and another thing is uh, gloves. So they have gloves uh, on the farm, which you can, you know, borrow or whatever you can basically use. But, you know, they're just from old volunteers. You cannot, like, match and pair them or whatever. Like, I had this favorite glove, but it was only, on, like, one hand that was left. <laughs> so it, it was a big deal for me, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so bring... Bring your favorite gloves if you have any for working. <laughs> mm. Okay, next up to consider is Wally boots. Um, you don't necessarily have to bring them with you. You can borrow them on the farm or if they don't have your size, you can just purchase them from the local shop if you don't want to take them in your luggage. But you'll definitely need them. I use them like every <laughs> single day. <laughs> yeah, Lily always had them on, but I, I wore my Crocs anyway. Like even in a pick, pick yard and stuff like that. So yeah, it was stupid, but... <laughs> You went through like two pairs. Yeah, Crocs all the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll definitely need adapters. That's something that you're gonna have. You're gonna need, and it's the same as like the US. It's like two slotted, um, yeah. like for the adapter. Yeah, the plug. Yeah. Another thing you will definitely need is a positive attitude about getting dirty and hands on with all the animals and tasks. Okay, because it's a farm, so yeah, you're gonna get dirty and. If you're going to freak out potentially about any of this, you should definitely have a plan B. That's another thing you'll need. And it also states it on the website. Like, you know, if you're not happy, if they're not happy, you need to basically leave, do something else in Costa Rica. Like, there's so much to do. Come on. So, yeah. Um, and then there's like a couple of other things that are just optional. So, um. One thing that would be hugely beneficial would be if you could speak Spanish or if you know a bit of Spanish. Um, Yiri knew some Spanish, so it was like a little bit helpful. But to be honest, like I knew nothing and I managed there fine for three months. But um, yeah, you're, you know, I was using a translator when I had to or, you know, I was with people that could speak Spanish. So I was probably just kind of lucky. Translator meaning Google Translate, not like a physical person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just hired someone for three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another thing that people were doing while we were there was they were getting SIM cards for their phones and like buying data and stuff like that. But we managed finally. We were yeah. there the whole three months and we were just connecting to the Wi-Fi. Like it wasn't a big deal for us to have of data when we were away from the farm mm -hmm. but maybe that's because we were together though again yeah yeah because some people can they're traveling know. solo mm -hmm. and just to like you know have that security of being able to contact someone when they need to for sure so that's the list so now let's kick it off with the things we felt were maybe not as great so we can quickly move on to the things we loved yeah, so the first one, obviously you guys know that the traffic there was super loud because whenever we tried recording, it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> we were 
we were stationed like right beside like this a hill, road, like yeah, a hill, yeah. like a steep hill, and the drivers just didn't know what to do. Like so, whenever they got there, they were just changing the gear too late, or I don't know what was happening. But you got like a lot of heavy trucks going round, and during the night, and you would be sleeping and be woken up a lot because the windows there, they're. I don't know how to explain it. They're kind of like open windows with mesh. And then, yeah, so it's, it's not... It's always like, open, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, it's it not is, like a closed yeah. window, so mm. it's like... Because you need fresh air all the yeah. time. Yeah. So the windows are kind of open all the time, and then it can be, like, very loud. And so that was... um, Yeah, that was one of... It's just that problems. location we were there at the house, like, you know. But I, I think the Casita folk were kind of fine because they were yeah. quite far away from the road. Yeah, but, like, mm. you know, you get used to it. Yeah. Like, at the beginning, it was such a problem, and then mm-hmm. after a week or so, you were kind of just, like, it was normal. Yeah. Another point uh, for here is this, you know, this farm experience, it's a small group, you know. You have maximum of six volunteers at any given point, and it could be even less. So, you know, it's a closer group of people, and therefore it can go, go two ways. Uh, you know, you can have a great atmosphere with some people and, you know, a little awkward with others, which, mm-hmm. you know, that's what it is. So, you know, we all had to cook together, decide, to decide on tasks together, closely interact all the time, basically, because, you know, that's what it is. And in the three months, we experienced so many different vibes and it's fairly hard to adjust between, you know, like if you have a really uh, nice group, and then they leave. Not everyone is there for months, you know. We, yeah. we were there for three so, like, months. Yeah, but some people are there a week. Yeah, you would get used to it. Like, you know, it would just become the perfect energy. And you were like, oh, this is amazing. And then one of those people would leave or two of them would leave. And then it would change again. And Two then, other would come and yeah, it would be and different. Then, yeah, you know? and, like getting to know them and like getting to know each other. And then like creating that like nice vibe again. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was always shifting and changing. So it was quite tiring. Like, yeah, it was pretty, pretty tiring. Yeah. Um, another point that we want to talk about is that quite a few volunteers left early when we were there and um, it created quite a lot of pressure on us because they would like leave on our days off or you know we had to step in you know like deal with things like you always need to take care of the animals you know yeah Mm -hmm. and um we were put into quite awkward situations sometimes because those volunteers would like assured us that they were going to tell like alan and patty that they were leaving and all this sort of stuff and then they would just like write them a message like the day they left or or even four days after they left yeah and and then like like, um you know like patty or alan would message me and then i had to like let them know and it was just like a really uncomfortable situation because those people promised us they were going to do something and obviously like it wasn't our place to say like you know to get in touch with them either so it was kind of like we were just put under this like unnecessary pressure and tension which was kind of unenjoyable yeah it was not that great <laughs> and another point for for there is this whole Costa Rican time yeah we've been told it's like a cultural thing and it's you know generally accepted and um, i think it's like in many other places basically you know you get any workers hired or like food deliveries and you know they would just not show up on time and would show up on at random times sometimes even you know dif- different day or yeah so like hours after days after, and you had to just deal with them you know even after your work uh, especially if uh, the owners weren't at the farm they would just turn up after dark even and you had to just like deal with this. Yeah. So, but that's the, that's the cultural that's thing. That's the Costa Rican way. Yeah. Um, another con for us was when the owners went away for quite a long time. They went away for three and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. They like, Alan had been away for like a few days, um, like I don't know like once or twice or something yeah Yeah. like Mm a few days at a time and that was fine and then they went away for three and a half weeks which was quite a long time and some of the things that happened there was so when they went away I was the the main person that had to sign well I was the only person that could sign for the delivery for the shopping and it got delivered like once twice a week sort of thing and at random again yeah Yeah. and so you know we'd be like okay we need some food now and we would put in the order and I would ask can you um ask it to be delivered before um like you know the end of the working hours which would be about 12 ish and it like 
it couldn't be like guaranteed that that would happen yeah, yeah, yeah. and there was like a like a few occasions that it would be delivered after the working hours and it was just quite stressful for me because obviously after you finish work you want to go have a shower you want to relax and you're free to do what you want yeah. but there was like two or three times where I wasn't able to do that and one of them was my day off one time I was like woken up by a nap and it was just like it was just very unenjoyable again like I tried um expressing that and communicating that eventually like it did get sorted so um that was good but that was um one of the yeah one of the things like you know you couldn't go to the river you know t- like we couldn't go when we were yeah but, but everyone else could like yeah, I didn't yeah. understand like what I was kind of getting myself into when yeah, I agreed yeah. to do the sign in mm-hmm. like um but yeah it like it got sorted after a while so that was good yeah, so still in this category, you know, again, you're on call 24-7 and, you know, Lottie would get daily messages from Patty and it was quite stressful being micromanaged from the distance, you know, like, obviously, if anything happened, we we would get sometimes responses in the afternoons, you know, and we would just have to text with them for sometimes in for an hour, you know, so yeah, it was just because... a lot of time just taken away from our free time to just for this responsibility yeah, yeah because um we only had like wi-fi yeah. so if something happened i would like go up to the house and message them and then i would like carry on doing tasks and then it was like oh i better go see if i've got a reply and then it was like a lot of back and forth and then you know it would be finished working hours but then it was like oh can you st- happened, can you do yeah, this this yeah. and this and then there was like a lot of messaging and again that was like quite a tight inside of it um mm-hmm. yeah Another thing as well was that obviously with the owners being away, whenever a new volunteer came, it was like our responsibility to like greet them, show them about, like train them, train them yeah. do everything and like they weren't there. So that was like another extra responsibility. Yeah, there is also it was a couple of unforeseen things during this time where, you know, the internet wasn't working for like a week. So we had to deal with this company and like, you know, even you know, still communicate with Alan and Patty, but through like, you know, other other people there. And it was just uh, weird. And then um, <laughs> we also, there, there was like a tree that fell down on a, on like a power line. Yeah. And, <laughs> and cut the power out yeah, for two days. So that had to be dealt with and crazy yeah. times. Yeah. Anyway, like it was just, that was like a few points. Um it was just the length of time I think that they were away like you know maybe if it was two weeks or whatever and you know if those unforeseen things didn't happen it would have been fine but there was just there was like multiple other things as well that was going on like we could go on forever but we don't want to like overdo this yeah like we're not gonna like go into it all but yeah that was just like too much to not have like someone um like there to to look over everything Yeah, yeah yeah Um, Okay, so it might seem like a lot of cons, but trust us, we know the majority of people would not experience it, right? Yeah. Uh, It was just a unique unique kind of set of conditions for 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 this to happen. And we actually truly enjoyed our state on the farm. So let's look into why. Yeah, so one of like one of my favorite pros about the farm was cooking with no oil, and I loved that that was like a strict policy of theirs because if it wasn't, we genuinely would never try cooking without it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really nice to see um how our bodies felt over the three months of being there with cooking no, with no oil, um, and just kind of cooking from whole foods altogether. Yeah. Like there was, you couldn't really get any processed foods like. The most processed food was what? Probably some like tofu and dried like soy chunks mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed all the cooking there um, and the and cooking with no oil, like all the benefits we saw, like Yiri especially, like back home, Yiri would be bloated like every single day. Yep. And on the farm, <laughs> all the, his bloating went away. He also had like lots of spots on his back. Like not whole, like a lot, but like you know, I would have like these spots sometimes on my back, and they would just clear out. Yeah, after like this, the, like eating like this. Yeah, and it's the first time I've seen it on the whole time we've been together that his back's been clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and we lost like a lot of excess fat, and we both just felt like we had way more energy. Like after each meal, it would, you know, sometimes you feel sluggish and whatever, mm. but you would just never feel like that when how we ate on the farm 
Also, it was like Alan like taught us quite a lot of cooking tips and recipes and as well as all the other volunteers there, you know, they would all have their own cooking ideas or how they cook at home. And it was just really cool being around a bunch of people with like different ideas. and Yeah, all vegan, you know, all sharing yeah, their like kind of experience. Their techniques. All that. And, so it was really good. Yeah, it was so cool. So basically, like um, before we went to the farm, like I never enjoyed cooking at all. I enjoyed eating the food, but I was, and I did cook, but it was never like enjoyable for me. I always felt like I was kind of grudging the time I was spent in the kitchen, but now I've got like a totally different attitude towards cooking. Like I love it and I'm excited and yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and another point for the pros is the farm is very hands-on with the animals, which come on after you know, the two previous um, projects we've done, which were very hands off, like this was just blessing, right? So even though some volunteers were not handling it well, we just loved it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can be with the animals like after your shifts as well, if you want, you know, just like taking them for walks, like just if you're vegan, you're, you're just going to love this because like you're walking to the <laughs> to the kitchen and suddenly this white beautiful horse just runs towards you seeking attention like you know wants a carrot or something yeah demanding food like come on <laughs> or like goatee just appears from behind a from behind a wall or something and you're just like also seeking attention. it's just so different like yeah. from regular life and all the like all the dogs are really happy to see you yeah, it's just true. whenever you open your door to go out there's just so many beings like wagging their tails and just happy to see you it's like it mm. like you know it really puts a smile on your face and makes it worth all the you know the trouble that they put you through with all the barking <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah, another um, amazing thing that we found there was that the accommodation was really good. Like compared to our previous accommodations, obviously the toilets were outside and, you know, we had like a nice room. We actually had like two single rooms and then like a bathroom in the middle. So we would use like, you know, one of the rooms for like yoga and meditation and just like having some space and then the bathroom was quite large and it was like nice everything was clean and um yeah it was you know there was the cockroaches <laughs> that we, we had to share the space with them but actually like we handled it really well and yeah you get we used didn't to mind it. them after you know after some time yeah so. i only got crawled on like what three times <laughs> yeah i got crawled on twice yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but over three months is like nothing yeah so uh, another point for pros is reasonable work hours. So, you know, again, compared to the previous placements, the hours were just great in Plant Costa Rica. Sometimes, you know, you can even go on a big dog walk during your wor work hours, you know. So that was that was a bonus. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was really good. Like, you know, six, well, we, six to twelve. It's like, yeah, six like to twelve thirty. 12. Then you would cook all to like together, which is not considered like a work time, but it, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. And then you just put go away around like, like five, five yeah. late at six p.m. Yeah. Yeah, but it might change again in the future. I don't know how they'll do it. Mm -hmm. Another pro for me is the nature and the climate there. It was my favorite climate. I know I'm saying that you need a variety of clothing, but it was. You know, in Thailand, it would be humid and raining and, and like could be miserable. But in Costa Rica, even though it was raining, it would rain for a few hours and then it would be stunning again. Like it mm. was so nice and like just the property on the farm was so visually stunning. Like mm -hmm. it was with the animals, Palomo, the hammocks and then like the river just at your fingertips. Like it was just... On it, honestly, it's like a paradise there. It was just like a perfect combination of hot country, but in like a higher altitude with less people. So, you know, fresh yeah, air, explosion fresh air, of Yeah, green. clean air. It was like so very good. green. It was like so, so green and lush and like rainforesty and uh, yeah. Whenever we went to the dock, like a regular dock walk, you know, in uh, through the hill to get to the river. Like every time I was walking there, I heard the earth song playing in my head. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a thing my brain does, right? But yeah, it would be beautiful. Like the butterflies going through the, you know, the green forest. It was just amazing. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And even though it's hot, it doesn't get too hot, which is why it it was perfect for me. Like Thailand was too hot, South Africa could get too hot, but it was never too hot in Costa Rica. And even those days that it could be, you've always got access to rivers. But in the other countries, we didn't have that. So Mm -hmm. like, I think that's what just balanced everything out for me. Um, Another point here would be the bonds you make with people, yeah. As we said, it can go two ways, but when it goes the right way, you can form some very meaningful connections with people and lasting friendships, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get to know people really well in these conditions. and Yeah, because you're, like, you're put together, like, so closely mm. and intensely, and it's just... You cook together every day. It's just... Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. So we've made some really good friends there. For sure. Another um, pro is that the improvements that Alan and Patty were constantly making while we were there. So mm-hmm. there was a few things. Obviously, we mentioned that some volunteers left and those volunteers, um, you know, gave them feedback and um, they worked on that feedback. So we changed um, some of the, like, you know, we raised the standards of some hygiene um, aspects of the farm. Mm. We um, changed... Uh, the way that we were dining as well and, and cooking as well it was all then inside yeah like yeah. there were like really you know good. they they yeah. worked on the feedback and then also things like our shower was broken it got fixed like pretty much instantly um there was uh, while we were there they expanded the pig enclosure um alan was talking about building a new dog pen for like you know when a new dog arrives on the farm like just like they're always thinking ahead like of how to improve like we built a path there it's just yeah the bridge yeah there's (laughs) there's always like it's not just like oh this is the way the farm is and let's maintain it it's like let's maintain it and how can we also improve it which is Mm -hmm. quite good yeah and the last point, but not less important, mm-hmm. is Alan, okay? What an interesting guy with a lot of crazy and cool life experiences in general. Like, I will miss him for sure. We've had, like, really some nice chats about music, technology, and, like, anything, really. Um, also, he saved my life, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when true. he took me to a hospital, you know, just reacted really well, like, fast, like stayed with us for spanish yeah know. translated for us yeah we would have been lost without him. so nice you know like always really nice cooking awesome meals sometimes you know very caring and friendly and funny you know so like yeah. it's it's like you know obviously there is an age gap but we never felt it it was like that's so true. cool yeah that's very true. um and we let's love spending time with him so yeah. thanks alan <laughs> In conclusion, overall on the farm, um, we obviously had some ups and downs, but we were there for a long time. We were there for three months. And when I look it back or at any point in my life over three months, like when have I ever been constantly happy? And yeah. the answer is never. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was normal to have ups and downs. So looking back of it, like overall, like we, like I really enjoyed my stay there. And I'm Me like too. really happy and grateful that we got that opportunity and time there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so me and Yiri have agreed that Planet Costa Rica was definitely our f- favorite placement out of all three. Yeah, for all the pros we mentioned on this episode. So definitely check it out if you're in the area or would like to go for like a nice workaway thing. Yeah, or want to cook with no oil. Yeah, <laughs> so hopefully we'll visit the animals and Uncle Alan uh, again in the future. That would be really cool. So special thanks and shout out goes to all the cool people we met on the farm. And here are their names. Alan, Paddy, Dia, Emily, Carla, Lexi, Sydney. Andrea, Sarah, Miriam, Gabriella, Alison, Romy and Matt and Katie. Yeah, guys, we love you. If you'd like to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Lori and Yiri Go Wild. We'll be releasing pictures and updates about our travels there. If you have any questions, suggestions or would just like to say hi, Please do. Uh, you can personal message us through our Facebook page or by email at ljgowild at gmail.com. So this is it, guys. Have a lovely day, whatever and whenever you are. Stay inspired, happy, and wild. Much love, guys. Bye. Bye.